Greg Gumbel in New York, Virginia with an 8-2 lead on Albany. We'll keep track of that game for you. But meanwhile, game time has come for you in Chicago, Midwest region, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and the Running Rebels of UNLV. Let's take you live to the United Center and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. And welcome to the United Center here in Chicago, Georgia Tech and UNLV. They've met only once, and that came at the 1990 Final Four. The Running Rebels won it on their way to a championship. The winner of this game will take on the winner of Wisconsin and Texas A&M Corpus Christi, which will be the second of four games today here in Chicago. Hello, friends. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Right. Really good matchup to start the day here. Billy, some of the players to watch. Well, Jim, we've got some outstanding talent here today without question. And the players to watch for Georgia Tech, two freshmen. Javaris Crittenden, who is averaging 14.6 points a game. He's got 178 assists on the year. Terrific. And Thaddeus Young, who is an outstanding player. Last game had 30 points in that double overtime loss to Wake Forest. Two great young players. UNLV, Wink Adams. He had a tremendous tournament in the Big Mountain conference tournament is coming up he's the number one score on the team and Wendell White first team all Mountain West Conference player. and a look at the lineups not a senior starting for Georgia Tech but four seniors for the running rebels UNLV 28 and 6 on the year coming in having won its last seven games head coach of Georgia Tech Paul Hewitt he took his Yellow Jackets all the way to the national championship game in 2004. On the other side, Lon Kruger in his third year at UNLV, and this is the fourth program he has taken to the NCAA tournament. This game is brought to you in high definition television by Harris Corporation, world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. It's in the arms of Kruger, who was the conference tournament most valuable player for the Run Rebels, who won on won their conference tournament and the ball slips away from Wink Adams and Georgia Tech takes advantage a sudden game with an excellent solid screen there bad turnover Kruger Crittenden that'll be interesting Kruger a fifth year senior here on the drive to the basket unable to finish it was young with the missed shot a beautiful drive but unable to pay it off trying to work it inside a single hey, yes Georgia Tech that's caught on a switch that time Crittenden got talk caught with a big man Singay who's not going to shoot up that many jump shots shot right over the top of his head good recognition and in traffic after splitting the defenders Crittenden draws the foul and the call is against the single Jim Crittenden is one of those guards that possesses not only the quickness and the ball handling ability but he is extremely powerful. So when you go ahead you, you're better to just play him by position and not try to reach in on him because he's so strong he can not only blow by but he's got that strength to take it all the way to the basket. Morrow out high giving it down baseline short shot rolls off the front of the rim put back no but drawing the foul second in close shot. Missed by Young. So UNLV out of the Mountain West, the 1990 national champions looking for their first tournament win since the 1991 Final Four team. Gaston Asenje will have to sit down, picks up two quick fouls. He leaves the lane a little early. We have seen what that's done to a club that'll be playing here later today, Kentucky. Lucky the officials pulled him back on that line. First shot coming up for Dickey. Rashawn Dickey. One more coming, and they'll bring in Joel Anthony as the Senge sits with the two early fouls. Dickey, a powerful young man, but uh, also has a nice touch in the foul line, shooting right at 75%. And just one of two. Wendell White pulls it down for the running Rebels. Another good screen. Georgia Tech going behind those screens. Beautiful pass inside and shot wildly put up by Anthony. Dickey pulls it away for Georgia Tech. Crittenton on the drive. Kicks it out. 
Young with the jumper, rattles out. 0 for 3, but he's had three good looks. You give that outstanding freshman that many good looks, he's going to start scoring. Three-pointer from the corner. That is Ume making the three-point shot for the running Rebels, up 5-1. Playing strong man-to-man -man defense. You see Grinton had taken. Called it a timeout. Was called that time on the plate. Paul Hewitt feeling his team, Jim, is not getting into their offense. So timeout tech. As UNLV has taken the early lead. Billy, yesterday, not really any big shockers. In fact, not that many close games. Maybe we'll have a different story here today. Well, conference is off to a good start. Big Ted 3-0, ACZ 3-1 with that Duke game being their loss. And the Big East at 3-1 with Marquette being their loss. Paul Hewitt did not like the fact that Crittenden was putting that ball on the floor so much. Here's a nice trap. Nice job by UNLV. Dickey kicks it back out and in and out for Morrow. Put back goes Dickey with the rebound and basket. The Sunday out of the ball game, you're going to see Dickey and the front line of Georgia Tech really having an advantage on the boards. Not getting it in in time. Kruger takes some timeout. Wendell White couldn't find anyone in time. Run Rebels. Take a break. <laughs> Billy, Georgia Tech's resume on the road this year, not impressive. They had two wins in Maui early in the year, and then a win at Florida State. That was it away from home. Right. They had lost 17 straight until that Florida State game on the road in the conference. Energy picked up a lot when uh, Lon Kruger decided to go out with a little half court trap. Georgia Tech recognized it pretty well, getting that ball down inside. Hey, Anthony setting some good solid screens too, without fouling. Kruger past Crittenton, gives it up, and Anthony dropped it. Five on the shot clock, tough shot. And that never touched the rim, so two seconds on the shot clock. That's it. Jim, you can see Anthony may be a great shot blocker in the defensive end of the floor, but he has trouble with his hands making that catch inside. Better hands would have put that away easily. Who would have had an assist? He's got to put it up. They forgot about the yeah, shot clock. He wasn't thinking at all. And let's think about this, Jim. Why would Anthony be the guy coming to the ball? He should be setting a screen. He's not going to take a shot from out there. You get you get the ball to somebody that can put up the three point shot with two seconds left. Dickey bouncing it in and White forces the steal chased down by Anthony. Trying to feed the low post again and UNLV all over it. Oh good pressure on Kruger. UNLV having problems getting the ball up the floor and that shouldn't be a problem. Their problem should be inside with a superior height that Georgia Tech's thrown at him. Ume will go back out with it and Kruger snaps it over to Ume. Three point shot is second of the game to go. There is the advantage and where where was Ume on that last inbounds pass. You know a good screen for him on the sidelines. He had a decent look two for two from three. 8-3 UNLV. Crinton got away from Adams. Rejected by Anthony. Disrespected the shot blocker supreme. Ume squared up for another three. His third of the game. Crinton got the shot block and did not hustle back down court, Jim. Did you notice that? Not in position defensively. But he's got to respect Anthony, who's right behind Kenyon Clark in all-time shot blocking history. At UNLV. Anthony had 13 blocks in one game this year against TCU. Inside they go. Young, three defenders around him, and a traveling call. He, he's now 0 for 4. Cooper's guarding him. He should have no problems posting up inside. Anthony with the block leads to an Ume 3, and UNLV leads it. Craig Dumble Clark, Kellogg, Seth Davis in New York. We'll get you back to your game in a moment after we check in first on what's happening in New Orleans. And what's happening in New Orleans is an impressive showing by North Texas. They're very athletic and they're aggressive and they're playing with a lot of confidence. That looks like Calvin Watson. He made one from back there, not that time. 
But this is going to be a high energy game at both ends. Both of these teams want to get up and down. How about that? The hoop and the foul. I mean, you can see in this sequence, this is a 15 versus a two. That's Keith Wooden with the follow, and uh, they are athletically very even, very unusual in a 15 2 matchup. All right, guys, meanwhile, in Columbus, Ohio, Albany got off to a slow start. Virginia did not, and uh, so far that's the story of this game. Yeah, Virginia's been terrific. They came out aggressively at the defensive end and have executed offensively extremely well. Yeah, very important that Virginia got off to this kind of start. We know how good their guards are, and that single Terry with the ball to his backcourt mate, Jared <laughs> Get used to it, guys, but they also have a decided advantage inside with Kane and Diani. That's going to be a big-time factor. All right, guys, we'll keep track. Meanwhile, let's get you back to Chicago and rejoin Jim and Billy. And now, with a new 35 coming out of the break, UNLV leading 11-3. Kruger has Smith on him. It's good to get the ball back in his hands to take advantage of that matchup. Here he is. Kruger, three, too strong, and to the corner, one bounce into the arms of Smith. Jim Kruger should have been a little bit more patient that time because they could have broken Smith down off the dribble. That's a travel. Jeremy Smith, who was just named co-captain going into the ACC tournament, joining Mario West and Paul Hewitt, figuring it was a time, the right time, to give this team a little more energy and recognize the great efforts and leadership qualities of Smith, who will go out after the walk. Peacock in. This team is extremely deep in the front court with young players. Young's going to come back into the ball game. Not off to a good start, but he has had a lot of good looks. Two Houston kids over here playing catch, Ume and Adams. UNLV looking for some options with 10 on the shot clock. And a steal. Good pass. Aminu to Crittenton, and no foul call. Bodies tangled underneath, and it's going to go against Anthony of UNLV. Ume from the corner, then launching one from the wing, and then one from the top of the key. He's had some big games this year. 22 against TCU, 22 against UC Santa Barbara as well. So. Potential of lighting it up. Morrow with a three, and yes. Best perimeter shooter on this Georgia Tech team. They had not hit a field goal in over four minutes until that one. Here you have Kruger with Young on him. There have been a lot of switches. Stolen away by West. <laughs> Jim, I told you what an outstanding defender West is. He's got great size and quickness, anticipating ability, extremely strong. He's a shutdown man for Georgia Tech. That's a reach in call against Morrow. Paul Hewitt already going deep into his bench. Yeah, that bench providing a lift, a much needed boost here for the Yellow Jackets. Sluggish in the opening minutes, and now they bring in yet another sub. DeAndre Bell, number 13, coming in. You see Lon Kruger coming in with Terry, realizing he doesn't want to get worn down in this ball game. Anthony, again, the hands or the lack of real hand control there exposed as he could have caught it and probably made a move right to the basket. Yeah, you would have gone up two hands strong, he would have eliminated Young coming across and getting the tip. Nobody on white right now for Georgia Tech. They're playing a little zone here in this situation. Does Kruger recognize it? A 1 2 2 zone. A lot of size out there. Young at the top of that zone. There's Terry. Skip pass. Adams, three. Oh, oh, shot. shot. Wow, how about that? Right over Thaddeus Young. Great <laughs> shot. But Young at six foot nine, long arms. That might have what made the shot, Jim, because he really put a beautiful arc on it. UNLV's hit four out of six from behind the line. With Crittenden out of the ball game, good idea to 
pressure Georgia Tech. Don't have that backcourt ball handler on the floor. Kaminu. Back to the rim and pulled down by White. And really good blocking out job by UNLV. A smaller team on the floor. Oh, Adams got past nearly everybody until Bell defended. And fouled him on the end. Yep. So free throws coming up after the break. Ume helping lead UNLV to the six-point lead. Greg Clark and Seth in New York will get you back in just a moment after we check in what's happening elsewhere in New Orleans, North Texas, and Memphis. It's a four-point lead for the Mean Green and the 15th seed in the South region against the number two seed Memphis Tigers. Nice move there by Dozier to get in the lane, but these teams mirror each other. Very aggressive, very deep, and they play at a high rate of speed. Now it's a matter of which team can be more composed in handling the ball and getting good shots. You can see North Texas is very athletic, but this is certainly a very, very comfortable pace for Memphis. The more possessions, the better for them, and they have the big guys inside, especially with Joey Dorsey. All right, guys. Meanwhile, in Columbus, Albany got off to a slow start. Virginia has not. 33-17. Cavaliers in the lead. We'll keep track of all of these games for you. Meanwhile, let's get you back to the United Center in Chicago. Georgia Tech and UNLV. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. The Red Rebels on the side. And two of those coaches, one Raleigh Massimino, won a national championship and proved what he could do in NCAA tournament. And Charlie Spooner was an outstanding NCAA tournament coach, too, but neither one getting the long-term job done there. Coach Mass there only two years. West will put up the three. And Anthony, that time, shielded away. Rashawn Dickey. I tell you, UNLV doing a terrific job on the defensive glass. Georgia Tech getting only one shot and done, even though they've got superior size. UNL Great blocking out. UNLV has brought in Darger, number 45. Joe Darger out of Riverton, Utah. Here he is. He can shoot it. How about that? Let the shooter wide open. Nobody blocking out the shooter. And he chases down his own miss. Georgia Tech doing a woeful job in regard to just basic fundamental jobs on blocking out. Terry tries the three. Tipped around, last touch by Tech. We well, had three Tech players in a rebounding position, one from UNLV, and Georgia Tech still doesn't get the ball. UNLV just beating them on the boards. It's Georgia Tech coming off that double overtime loss in the ACC opening round against Wake Forest. Adam. Game that almost looked like it would never end. Another situation where a rebound to UNLV. Quick pass. Leaves Darger open. And just off that time. And again, last touch by the Yellow Jackets. They are just doing a great job on the boards. And Jimmy, they have a minus rebounding advantage to their opponents coming into this ball game. But today they're blocking out, they're getting up on the boards, they're following their shots. And that's what's putting them in a situation where they're controlling this game early. Smith back on the floor for Georgia Tech, and it's been one of the better rebounding teams for Paul Hewitt this season. Yeah, they have an advantage of six rebounds per game over their opponent. Darger got three chances on that trip, none of them go. Brinton almost lost the handle. Boy, Young is really having a nightmare of a ball game, trying to do too much by himself early. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg, Clark, and Seth will take you out for a live look at all the action going on in the tournament, get caught up on the latest tournament news, and an AT&T video highlights. All coming up on AT&T at the half. Morrow back in, and his other co-captain, well, actually, Smith's the co-captain, but the original single captain of the team, West to the bench. Here's Morrow. What a rebound that time by Anthony. Now, you know Anthony's going to have to play a lot of minutes because the same day went out with foul trouble, got two fouls in about the first two minutes of the half. Anthony has had to stay right out there. On the season, he's only playing 18 minutes a game. So this is a big challenge for him. West wasn't out for long. He comes right back in for Morrow. Racing up from behind. 
It's Terry from the corner, and that three is good. They've now taken 15 field goal attempts. 12 of them have been from three. And Jim, a terrific job of making that extra pass to set up a teammate for a good shot. Another reason why they're rebounding so well. Got a double-digit lead, feeding it inside, and this is going to be a call against Darger. I Darger, think. I do think it is Darger. Here, Georgia Tech now starting to go inside, which is where they ought to go with a guy like Young, particularly. He's got a big height advantage over anybody that's guarded him in this ball game. Well, Billy, you've seen Georgia Tech a number of times this year. It's first time in person to see UNLV. What's your first reaction? Well, I think UNLV is just doing a much better job as to how they're playing the game. Here's what I said: he can Young can post yeah, up the outside, inside. One of the things about Georgia Tech is extremely young team particularly with the guys that have the ball the most, Crittenden and Young. You never know what freshmen they're going to do in their first NCAA tournament game. Sometimes they try to do a little bit too much, and I think that's their problem right now. Great backdoor cut. Oh! Adams. Is it a charge? Dickey trying to draw it. Might been a little slow getting over there. Called on Dickey. Follow every minute of the madness at CBS Sports Line. Get expert analysis. Watch exclusive online video, live scoring, and stats for each game. Tournament coverage updated around the clock. CBSSportsLine.com. That'll send Wink Adams to the line for two. Solid all-around player. He's got 51 steals on the year. Shoots 75% from the foul line, 36% from three. Just a real solid ball player. Marcus Lawrence comes in for Kevin Kruger. Second team all conference. What's going to be interesting in regard to this ball club now, how long can Anthony go? Is he going to come out and take a rest? No, he's going to stay on this floor. And bring in Corey Bailey for Adams. Bailey, a good athlete, probably the best matchup athletically that Young will have. There's Young posting up where he belongs. In a reach in call against UNLV, and it's going against Darker, his second. Now here's where Lon Kruger's going to have all kinds of problems. If Georgia Tech settles down and realize they can get the ball in the low post to any number of people, particularly Young. Wendell White will bring Darker to the bench. White, a senior out of Los Angeles, played with a broken jaw. One stretch this season. Rubber banded shut. Didn't miss any games. Right, had 12 stitches. Put the rubber band on and kept right on playing. <laughs> Good pesky defense by UNLV. They've been in the man to man this entire time. Even though giving up some size mismatches, they've really done the job. West. Crittenton three. Long. Way long. That's going to be White over the back. Shows you how strong Smith is. Georgia Tech shooting only 29% here in the first half. You can see White here will get his arm caught in there with Smith. And Smith just almost takes the arm off. Bailey almost got an elbow to the jaw. Back comes DeAndre Bell for Mario West. Georgia Tech without Morrow in the ball game right now, so they don't really have a perimeter shooter of count, but they get a lot of power on the inside. That's Dickey missing the little soft hook. Loose ball and a timeout called by Georgia Tech on the floor. Smith on the floor with the ball. He's so strong. Timeout Tech. But down 11. Terry hitting one of the three by the Rebels. It's all in the thumbs. Get an NCAA March Madness video game only at MyCopeRewards.com slash NCAA. Now, UNLV brings in Matt Shaw for the first time. 6'8", freshman from Los Angeles, number 34. Jim, I think it's an excellent move by Lon Kruger. You've got a working margin here. You've got to rest Anthony some. As I said, he only plays 18 minutes a game. There's a push. That's going to be on Dickey. That's his second. Georgia Tech not finding the range at all in their shot, not taking advantage, as I said, of the low post opportunities. 
they have a team on the floor right now that's relatively small. Aminu, the only player out there with size. But Shaw's job right now is to steal some minutes. Almost stolen away. It's going back to UNLV. Long cross court pass by White that time. Ume's been sitting down for a long time after hitting the three early long range jumpers. Well, I like the Lon Cougar saying, hey, I've got a lead. I'm going to rest my key guys. I'm going to rest my big guys and try to hang on to this lead. Eight minutes to go in the half. The lead is 11. Looking for more. Ume's been down the last five minutes. And almost a steal by Smith. Lawrence in traffic with the right and up. Trying to block it. Aminu is going to be called for the foul. Thought he had all ball there and might have. Free throws coming up after the break. UNLV try to extend its lead. We are back in Chicago. Jim Nance, Billy Packer here. And take a look at the game to this point three point shooting UNLV has launched 12 from the outside made five of them and out rebounding Georgia Tech by six plus six Jim I think a terrific ball distribution by UNLV to get those open three looks but what they're doing on the rebounding both on on both the offense and defensive glass has been tremendous against a team that's much bigger and particularly as we pointed out UNLV not a good rebounding team on the year Wendell White who was first team all conference this year. One more to go. Averages 14 a game. So Young returns for Georgia Tech for West. And here's full court pressure. Is Crittenden going to come back and get the ball? Does. What he has got to learn, and he's a guy with a lot of talent, he's got to learn how to get his team into their offense instead of taking everything on as an individual situation where he goes and establishes his own offense he hasn't done anything in this game to this point nope. that's a push on the outside a little touch Curtis Terry you might recognize with the long socks and the number 31 mind you of another Terry Jason Terry is his brother who had a great tournament run of, of his own at that's Arizona right. part of Lute Olson final four team yep one and one coming up as Crittenden sits. West returns. Young at the line coming off a 30 point game in the ACC tournament against Wake Forest. You know, when you look at Young and his ability to go to the basket and to post up, Jim, he's only taken 68 free throws this year. That should be about double for a guy that uh, has his ability to go inside and finish. Bailey and Terry out. Back in Ume and Adams. Ume having scored nine of UNLV's first 11. Three, uh, three for three from the outside. So when you look at this UNLV team right now, you say, okay, surround, penetrate, and kick out and see if they can keep this three point run going. They've got four starters on the floor with a Singe sitting down with two fouls. And Anthony sitting down, who did a terrific job for his club coming in. Not only shot blocking, but rebounding as well. White, baseliner, no. Way too strong. It's Young. Somebody should come back and get that ball away from him. He's going to go all the way to the end, and the pass was just too hard. Aminu unable to hold on to it. Smith saves it. You know, you should never reach in on Smith to try to steal the ball. He is so strong. When you look out on the floor for Georgia Tech right now, nobody came back to the ball because there's nobody a primary ball handler. West on the floor, but West is kind of a swing man. So Georgia Tech didn't have anybody that was setting up the offense. That was a reach in call against Kruger, so one and one for Smith. Oh, that one spins out. He's a 41% free throw shooter. Another loose ball and a tie up. Yep. Arrow is going to go to Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech right now is having all kinds of problems getting into an offensive set to take advantage of what's in the low post. Shooting 25 percent. Bell, Bell and West out there two swing men are the, basically the guard combo. 
Count to Smith. Kruger wisely really putting good defense on West to the corner and back out high. <laughs> They've not made a field goal in the last three minutes. Jim, they really have a team on the floor that has no direction offensively. Crittenton in this game, no points, no assist, and he's sitting. Now he's getting up off that bench now. I'm sure Paul Hewitt saw the same thing we did. He's got a team with five guys out there looking for somebody to be the point guard. Shaw setting some good, solid screens inside. There's another one. Five on the shot clock. Another rainbow shot. Easy rebound for Young. Well, UNLV, Jim, can't settle for just the three-point shot. They had some good screens inside, some good backdoor cuts. They've got to get something going down low. Almost a walk again. Feeding it down to Bell. It's a woeful exhibition by Georgia Tech in the first half of not having anybody that can get them in an offense. Ume missing for the first time today. Shaw has it rejected out of his hands. Shaw had a strong rebound at the other end, though. Well, all Shaw's job is to steal minutes here, Jim, and he has been able to do that for his team. Ten-point lead. Don't commit fouls. Set screens. Get some rebounds. Approaching five minutes to go in the half. White in the paint. Ume from the wing. And he's cooled off now, missing two in a row. On the floor, Smith with the rebound for Tech. And they've not had a whistle to bring Critton to back out there, so yeah. they're still rather rudderless at the point. Tim, I think they could even use a timeout now. They're down by 10 points in this ball game, and rudderless is a great term because that's what they are. You can see that pass. Every pass is like an experience, and in many cases, negative. Now West puts it up, banks it in. First points in the game in three minutes. We'll pick up here. Who's good outlet? Kruger. That dribble drive shut down by West, so he'll bring it back out. A look up at the board. We were here for the Big Ten tournament last week, and a lot like it. Yeah, the Big Ten <laughs> game is broken out here at the United Center. Well, that 20 point mark was hard for a number of teams to get to by halftime. Yeah, seeing it again today. UNLV over five minutes without a made field goal. To the corner they go. Three-point shot. There it is. Wink Adams. Give Kruger a lot of credit. There's no way he was going to be able to finish against those big people inside. Was able to find the open man. Oh, and they thought they had the steal. Would have been a breakaway the other way. Instead, the call is against Kruger, and that's his second. Over 16 minutes into the game, Georgia Tech's been held to 14 points. We can see disaster ready to happen for Georgia Tech. Two men in the paint, one guarding nobody. Here's Wink Adams on the side. As Kruger drives baseline, fires to the outside. And UNLV, as they had throughout this entire first half, wide open for good looking jump shots. Kruger's fourth assist. Crit Meanwhile, Crittenton has no assists in this game and, and no points. Georgia Tech sends DeAndre Bell to the line. Jim, we're looking at Crittenton, who's the number two assist man in the ACC with 178 assists, but never did get into the flow of this game. In the to get his club going. Again, freshman coming into his first NCAA tournament game, has to understand, settle down first, instead of trying to blow out a team that's over the back by Aminu. Crittenden's back on the floor out of the timeout. And that was Anthony with another rebound. He had a nice time to sit down there to not have to play so many minutes. That over the back will lead to a one and one opportunity for Wendell White. His UNLV team won again the Mountain West Conference Tournament, defeating BYU. Uh, BYU knocked out of the NCAAs last night in a, one of the tighter games of day one. Xavier beating him. 
Jim, in that ball game, UNLV was out rebounded 38 to 28. BYU was up at halftime 37 26. So a real nice comeback playing at home. There is a little bit of advantage there. White good on both. Leading by a dozen. Three and a half to go. And a steal. Forced by White into the arms of Adams. Ah! And Crittenden having all kinds of trouble in this first half. Another turnover. And here's that press. Nobody coming back. Greg Gumbel in New York will keep track of Georgia. Uh, Georgia Tech has a chance to take the lead for the first time in this game. And Jim, on that particular play, nobody came to the ball. You have Georgia Tech with a superior athleticism on the floor between these two teams. That's going to be a push. Asenge is going to get a foul away from the ball, Jim. That's going to be his third. Not what he wants to do. He played only one minute in the first half because of two quick ones. And now he'll come out. Joel Anthony will replace him. Georgia Tech inside of three minutes ago when the first half was down 14, then down seven at the half. And they've made up those seven points here in the first four minutes of the second half. Boy, Lon Kruger getting right in his face, talking about how important it is for him to stay on the floor and not pick up a cheap foul like that. Georgia Tech's bench has outscored UNLV's bench 22 to 3. Again, though, without a primary ball handler, where is the initiation going to come from? Peacock in the paint and a travel call. Georgia Tech without Crittenton on the floor right now. The decorated freshman has not scored in this game. He was out of sync from the opening minute. He really was, Jim. He tried to make things happen, as I said, individually at the beginning of the game instead of getting a team for him. That was off Cooper's leg. Excellent call by the official. Boy, that, there, there again, Jim. Isn't it amazing how, when the three officials, how they can get court coverage to catch something like that? Terrific job on their part. And as much as Georgia Tech struggled in that first half, and that's a push foul called against Wink Adams of UNLV. The running Rebs now are the team that's out of sync, out of sorts. They really are. They're pressing a little bit too much on defense. He's got to understand that West is not going to go ahead and be the kind of ball handler he normally would face as a point guard. So just play solid defense. Don't try to reach for the steal. Peacock handling the ball on Morrow, who's primarily a jump shot shooter. And a long range shot by Morrow's hit a couple in this half, not this time. And with that kind of size they have, they need to pump that ball down inside. UNLV has gone cold, having missed 14 of the last 18 from the field. They knocked down some threes in bunches in that first half. Jim White is a guy that UNLV could get the ball to. Here he is right here. Baseline oh, move yeah. leads to a basket and the lead again. He has to become more active and want that ball right now because where are the points coming from? Georgia Tech poised to bring back Crittenton on the next whistle. You see the difficulty they're having initiating any kind of offense without their primary ball handler in the game. More of a two-point shot. Bounces out, but he follows off the glass. He respected Anthony too much on that layup, didn't he? Thought he was going to get that one swatted away. So Crittenton comes back in, and you can sign up now for NCAA March Madness On Demand and watch live games from the first three rounds of the men's tournament online for free. Find out more at NCAAsports.com slash MMOD. Well, when that ball goes into Anthony and you're pressing, You've got to really overplay all the passes. You know he's not going to put the fall, ball on the floor and dribble. So go ahead and overplay and let him make a mistake. Kruger. Well, had he gotten a clean handle, he might have launched the shot, but Smith defending. You can see Georgia Tech switching. Five on the shot clock. And the ball. Ooh, there's an elbow thrown, and fortunately for Adams, did not connect. Only one second on the shot clock when that little scuffle and fight for the ball broke out. 
It'll go to Georgia Tech. You saw that little elbow right there. Again, another nice piece of officiating. So off the arrow, it goes back to the Yellow Jackets with Crittenton at the controls. Again, 0 for 4 from the field, no points. I say the key for Georgia Tech is for can this young man get into the ball game? Pass inside, man left alone, and Smith dunks it down. Smart play by Smith, realizing Anthony was on the way over for the shot block. Easily breaking the press. That's the first two points of the game for Jeremy Smith. Again, let's look for White. He's posting up on Crittenden down inside. Can they get him the ball? And away from the ball. It's going to be a call against Crittenden. I like what White did right there. He fought for position inside. He's the man they've got to get some points for. Curtis Terry returns for Nevada Las Vegas. Ume sits down. He has not regained that incredible touch we saw at the beginning when he made three threes. White with the jumper. Yes. Jim, he has really picked up. He recognized, the seniors recognized what he needs to do. In the last three or four possessions, he's made himself available as the score. It's going to be a push off call here against Terry of the Running Rebels. His second. I realized the basket didn't count, but did you see the shot yeah. that Crittenden made? He needs to make one for real. Yeah. Oh, well, wide open on the inbounds. Peacock chased down by Anthony. Up ahead to Terry, and he'll wait. Good Actually, idea. they go to the wing for Kruger. Had the open three. White with the tip. And Peacock clears. Jumpton gives it up corner. Nice pump fake. Crittenden on the drive and the dipsy do. There's the kind of player that he is. And that one for real. Yep. That one counts. Actually, a degree of difficulty down a couple of notches from the one he made before that didn't count. And this may uh, boost his confidence a little bit. First yeah. points of the game for Crittenden. Tied again at 44. Now watch how Georgia Tech is switching all players. White. Oh, he is on a tear, isn't he? Then the one man show in the second half for UNLV. You really like that when a senior steps up, realizing points have to come from somewhere. He's averaging almost 15 points a game and really doing the job here. 13 for this one, eight in this half. He's had three 24-point games, so it's not unusual for him to play above his average. West coming in from the side. What a move. And he recognizes Anthony's coming as well. And Anthony at the other end. Kruger. He'll take the three. Oh. Call on West. His second. And NLV will inbound when we return. The game is tied at 46. Greg Clark and Seth in New York. We'll get you right back to Georgia Tech UNLV after we show you what's happening first in New Orleans where North Texas has been able to hang with Memphis, although Memphis right now has opened up to a 45-38 lead. North Texas just missed a breakaway dunk that would have made it a four-point game. Now Dozier at the line to push the lead out a little further, a little farther, <laughs> further, farther. Push it out a little more. More. Increase their lead is Increase what you're saying. Lead. Well, uh, Memphis. unfortunately, they're ranked 314th in the country from the foul line. So if this game comes down to free throw shooting, they're going to lose. But it's been a pretty sloppy game, somewhat organized chaos. Both teams have 13 turnovers last we checked. But as we said, both teams are comfortable playing this style. It's going to be a barn burner. Meanwhile, in Columbus, Albany continues to trail Virginia 73 to 50. As these games move further, farther along, we will keep tabs for you. Meanwhile, let's get you back to Chicago. <laughs> Once again, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. 46, 46, Georgia Tech, a 10 seed. It's worst seeding ever in NCAA tournament play. Meanwhile, UNLV's first tournament appearance since 2000. Young is being played by smaller men all day, and they have not gotten the ball to it. Great rebound. Singay 
Up ahead. Terry, pull up three. Surprising. Oh. Didn't like the shot. But the rebound, last touched. It's going to be a Peacock hit it. Yeah, he went right off his hand. So right back to UNLV. That's a break. Now, not the kind of shot you want to see Terry take. Nobody under the boards. You want to keep this game nice and slow. West end for Crittenton. Who missed at the other end. Crittenton in this game now. Made just one shot. Out of six attempts. White's got Peacock. There's that switching by Georgia Tech out front. Every play is a switch. And because of the way their personnel is, Jim, that switch doesn't get them in trouble because about everybody is the same size, same degree of athletic ability. Halfway home. In the second stanza, Kruger comes off the screen, fires up the three, pulled down by White, and a hold that's, call, though. I that's think that's on go, West, and that's that's, uh, West. Is that his fourth? For West, that will be. He had one going to that last break. It was his, that's his third now. Yep. Crittenton coming right back in. Paul Hewitt trying to have little talks with him as he goes and probably wouldn't have come back in had it not been for a foul on a key defender that Paul Hewitt would like to have available as this game goes down the wire. All those threes that the running Rebels hit early that made only three of their last 19. Kruger. And give him credit for in effect wanting more and there they get back to offensive rebounding. Kruger shooting today is also off the mark like Crittenton. Now Jimmy it was two for 11 in the uh, Mountain West final. 0 for 6 today. Perry driving into the paint dishing. Ume, a floater, yes. Beautiful job by Ume. Realizing they were going to come out and play him for the jump shot. Penetrated right on by. Again, Young is being played by smaller people. He has not had enough touches. Crittenton, head fake. Peacock puts it up. And Ume with the rebound. He just made his first basket since... 15 minute mark remaining first half. Three pointer Kruger. How about Kruger? Keeps shooting the ball. Now 0 for 7. Bodies falling to the floor. It's going to be on Smith, it looks like. It is. Oh, is it? Tech, his second call against him. Near the end of this game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game. $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Chevy, an American revolution. So two on Smith. And team foul number six. It'll be one on one off the next one. If you're Kruger, you want to get back to being the ball handler since you're having such tough luck on your jump shot. Very. Too strong. Uh, just a bit. Crittenton. Speeding it up the floor. Nino getting a good look inside. He's back in with four fouls. Soft hook shot. No. Singe with the rebound. UNLV with the two point lead. White with a quick burst. Great change off the pass by White. So they had been challenged. They saw their 14 point lead vanquished. Tied up four different occasions. Now taking the lead. And looking for more. Up ahead to Terry Crittenden defending Terry. Gets the soft roll. And how about White's judgment with a great rebound, putting tremendous energy on both ends of the floor. The senior really coming through. First team all conference, and he's been the leader here. The running Rebs running that time. Six nothing stretch after the game was tied at 46. Wendell White coming up big in the second half, leading the running Rebels with 15. And 25 years ago, this tournament, Michael Jordan hit the winning shot for North Carolina. Deep corner that uh, Key Smart replicated a few years later. <laughs> the lucky spot in the world, isn't it? I don't know what happened to him after that big national championship, but he is here today. Taking in the action. Had a little uh, anniversary 
celebration of that championship team this year in Chapel Hill. They did that team and the 57 team a great moment in Chapel Hill. An undefeated 57 team that played that triple overtime game against Kansas. So we'll see later. Frittenton banks it in. Probably the most difficult shot he's had all day. Oh, that was a tough. It. Very tough. Let's see if White can keep fighting for position. He's got Smith on him, but as we know, Georgia Tech constantly switches, so he can go ahead and set a screen and get somebody else. Set play. Kruger calmly taking control of things. Ume. Yes. Big. You know what Dick Emberg would say for Ume? Oh my. Oh my. There again a reach in. You know what I like about Ume? He stands there and kind of puts the defender to sleep and takes that jump shot. Well, he hit three of those long range shots early. Hits another one here. March at a seven. Less than seven minutes left. Jim Nance, Billy Packer here in Chicago. UNLV led by 14 late in the first half. It was seven by the intermission. On four occasions in the second half, Georgia Tech tied the game but never took the lead. And now it's back up to the halftime count of seven. Georgia Tech to inbound. And look at Ume is guarding Young, giving up about five inches. Crittenton splits, fakes, puts it up off the glass, and he's starting to get the hot hand. At last, and a reach in call going against Tech. But you don't want to foul this young man right here who is an excellent free throw shooter. One and one at the other end. That's the first call against Young. Actually, that's been called on Smith number three on him Jim I thought this uh, young man played at uh, Arizona State Kruger missing the front end of a one and one he did Billy he, <laughs> he graduated from Arizona State talking about Kruger with the ball right now last spring there was an NCAA rule in effect for about six months that allowed him to transfer and pick up another year of eligibility that rule has been since rescinded here's young from the wing three. Slides off the front of the rim. Well, that rule 2005-54 has been rescinded, but he's picking up his second degree now at uh, UNLV playing for his dad. Number of players took advantage of the rule. Struggled shooting in this game from the field and misses that crucial front end of a one-on-one. Young down by Smith. Got a three-point game. There is where Georgia Tech is totally dominant. And they can get the power game going inside. And right here, White, the man that kept UNLV in the ball game, has to come back and want that ball now, going down the stretch. He's looking to break from the weak side right now. Wink Adams, fade away, nothing but air. Up ahead, Dickey didn't like the pass. Wow. Jim, think of the score. 55 52. It's almost have to be a perfect pass. Oh! Was actually a perfect pass for Dickey. Well, think the about it. Yeah, you think about it. You, you got a big man running with no angle to catch that ball. There's the dunk. No question about the finish there. But a turnover back to UNLV. You got to think when you're a guard, you got to think about the score, the time, the clock. And there's another bad foul. That one on West. His fourth. And also, when you're passing the ball, who's the man that's going to catch it and what position is he to be able to compete the play? Put Kruger back on the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Again, that, that was a bizarre rule that was in effect ever so briefly, but one that the Kruger family was able to take advantage of, and rightly so, give Kevin Kruger a year to play under his dad. Hits the front end this time. And there is Lon Kruger, the fifth coach in history, to take four programs to the NCAA tournament. Gets them both. And there, there is the reason why that was not a good foul. You don't want to put Kruger on the line. I realize he missed the front end before. But just play him solid. Put the ball in the hands of somebody else. Young in for West, who sits with the four fouls. Peacock still up, too strong underneath. Wild scramble. And it's back to Tech. 
And Young's got Kruger on him. He wants the ball down inside. Inside of five minutes and a five point deficit for the Yellow Jackets. Curtin off the front of the rim and in. There he is with that power to be able to go down inside and score. Where was it earlier in the ballgame? He's got eight points, all of them coming in this half. Adams, baseline shut off. Young almost making the theft. Georgia Tech pulled even four times in this half, but has never led in this game. Shot off the rim, no good. Crittenden. That numbers here. Three on two, and a fake, and a give up. Amino takes it down. Boy, Amino really ran the floor beautifully. One point game with four minutes remaining. Time to pull this ball back out and let White have an opportunity to finish a play. Amino ran that floor beautifully, but a great pass, too, by Crittenden. Who's a different player now than he had been the first, what, three quarters of this game? That one in and out, and Tech can take the lead for the first time. Paul Hewitt telling his team to push this ball up the court quickly. Again, I think Young is the man. He's got a small guy guarding him. There's Young. Jumper blocked. Inside, Morrow is fouled. Well, he had the size advantage talking about Young, but Ume was able to get a hand on it. Smith, Crittenton right there. Smith with the putback, one point game. Georgia Tech storming back again. They had to burn so many timeouts in that first half. They were so disoriented early in the game. Only one timeout remaining for Tech. But they send now to the line Anthony, Anthony Morrow. Yep, he's their best free throw shooter at 84%. He'll be shooting two shots with a chance to give Tech the lead for the first time in this first round game. And the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Last One year, more coming. Last year, Jimmy would have led the Atlantic Coast Conference in free throw shooting. He's right up there with J.J. Redick. Shot 89%, but didn't go to the line enough times. Last year, he averaged 16 a game. That's down this year, but he had a stress fracture in his lower back. Diagnosed in the offseason. He's had some big shots, particularly early in this second half. And now Tech leads for the first time all game. I think it's time for Wendell White to come back and expose himself, get the ball in scoring position. UNLV has gone three and a half minutes without a field goal. Senge short, and Crittenton pulls it down. As Crittenton's come on, so too has Georgia Tech. You may guarding him right now. And a switch off. Back out tomorrow inside of three minutes. Crittenton now with 10 seconds. Got a senior defending him, the freshman, with four seconds. Gives it up. Aminu over to Morrow. Has to put it up. And that's a violation. It hit nothing. And give UNLV a lot of credit right there. They double teamed on Crittenden. He did not go ahead and try to break the ball down quick enough off the dribble. Had to get rid of it. Put his team in jeopardy. Mario West back in for Georgia Tech. He'll replace Morrow. Can be four. If you're that guard, you have got to understand if the double team's coming, you got to either explode by immediately or get rid of that ball to a guy that can take the shot right away. Went to Amino, who's not going to take the shot. It's a senior-dominated team at UNLV. Oh. White off the glass, and there's one of those seniors regaining the lead for the running Rebels. Jimmy put him in a position to get that lead and then has not come for the ball of late. Georgia Tech has just used its last timeout. This is a 60-second timeout. Paul Hewitt will have no more chances to stop it. Down one, 2.19 to go. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, I'm a little surprised by that burning of the final timeout with 2.19 to go. Well, you know what, Jim, you have to think back to the first half when they had to burn timeouts just to get their team in some form of organization. Comes back to haunt you a little bit now. 
Morrow and comes back in the ball game. Young back into the ball game. Crittenden down underneath the basket in this inbound situation. Look for the screen from Peacock. All starters have set Peacock in for Dickey. Crittenden. The Again. split wasn't there. Goes out to Young. Young gives it up. And Smith will go to the line for a pair. Pretty good look by Young down inside. He didn't have the shot. Nice fake on his part. Senge picking up his fourth. Smith only a 48% free throw shooter. So if you're UNLV, you followed the right guy, but you had to follow him there. You had an easy layup. And one more coming. Chance to tie it. West back on the floor with four. Here's where it's really important if you're UNLV to block out strong here because you got a 48% free throw shooter. More than likely, the ball's coming off hard off that rim. Got the second one. Knotted now at 59. And it's Peacock on White. If you're White, you want to make sure that you touch this ball in this half court set. There he is. And he dribbled off his own knee. Ume able to save it. We're inside of two minutes. Gets it back, and the senior calms down. And a switch. Here it is. Smith defending now on White. Six on the shot clock. Gets up the jumper. Gets his own rebound. Wow, he ran in there and picked it off the floor. And a minute and a half to go. They'll take their time. And with Kruger having a 0 for 8 game, you'd think White's the man you want to get it back to again, and they do. White on the drive, tipped up block. Oh, what a and rebound. Outside, Adams for the lead. No. On the floor, Adams able to knock it off of Crittenden. It's back to UNLV. Three times UNLV with smaller club on the floor gets the rebound. Look at this effort. There you saw Crittenden figure there's no way the ball's going to be touched. Full 35 on the shot clock with 113 left. UNLV ball. UNLV still with three timeouts after using one right there. And what about the strategy coming out of the break? Well, I like what UNLV did. They went to the senior, the all conference first team player, White, who's had a very fine basketball game. And he not only got off a decent shot when he missed, he was uh, smart enough to go in and keep the ball alive for an offensive rebound. Crittenden probably, Jim, on that last play should have blocked out to make sure nobody could have tapped that ball in against him. UNLV now having their fourth opportunity to score in this possession. It's Wink Adams who saved the possession inside oh! underneath and a foul. That was White. A terrific feed by Kruger. Beautiful feed. And the foul on Aminu, number five. That's it for him. Just a scramble for every loose ball going to UNLV. Well, a good job by Kruger. It's really interesting how they have used this senior all-conference performer to come back and get the ball. Jim, remember, he put UNLV back in this ball game with the lead, and then he kind of went silent for a while, about four or five minutes in this last Four or five possessions. White has wanted the ball and has performed well. Got 19 in the game. Talking about White. 14 of them coming in this half, and he's got a free throw coming up. He hurt his uh, chest or his ribs a little bit on that last play. You can see him grimacing yes. right there. Goes to that foul line. 65% free throw shooter, but huge in this ball game. So a chance to complete the three-point play with 1:11 left. Long tipped over to Young and Georgia Tech now with a chance to tie or take the lead. And no timeouts left. Crittenton with Adams defending. Oh, he's good right defense. with us. Good it's defense. It's a five count call against Georgia Tech. It goes back to UNLV. That was about as fine a defensive effort as I've seen in a long time because Adams never tried to steal the ball. He just played position defense and stayed right with him. Great job. 
the guy at home's wondering now what what was that call again you well, tell them there was no advancement well in close, terms of the possession well closely guarded a good defensive position was Adams and he stayed with him more than five seconds think of the two plays he's made here the save out of bounds to keep the ball to set up the basket by white and then forcing that turnover and that's still staying with the run and rebels with 43 seconds. They will have to get up the ball, give up the ball, so they will have to score on this possession to prevent Georgia Tech from having a chance to win or tie. Run and Rebels take a timeout. 25 on the shot clock, leading by two. And remember, the arrow belongs to UNLV. That timeout may have, in fact, benefited just as much Georgia Tech. They had no timeouts left. It gives them a chance to get organized a little bit, make some personnel changes. And, Jim, if you're thinking right now, and I realize that White's tired, he's still grimacing out there, but when you look at this lineup right now, you want White to be able to touch this ball. You've got Adams and Ume. If you're Kruger, probably try to stay away from taking a shot because you haven't shot well all day. Inbound, Adams. No call on the shot. Singe underneath. Again, the whistle. Foul for it, and a foul this time. The young man who only got a chance to play one minute in the first half has plenty of energy right now. And a Singe is the guy that just battled for these rebounds. How about UNLV regaining possession so often down the stretch? Fighting for every loose ball. The whistle was against Peacock. So a Singe to the line to shoot two. He's made both of his attempts so far in this game. Watched him before the game. He likes to bounce the ball in his head like a soccer player. Right now he has a chance to bounce one in to get his team a victory in first round. Senior out of Cameroon. <laughs> Perfect for that one. 75% free throw shooter. Big one coming up. They bring back in Anthony for UNLV. And Georgia, White will sit. Georgia Tech goes with their offensive players, Young and Morrow, back into the ball game. But the key for Georgia Tech is they have not been able to get anything on the defensive end off the boards. All these Huge. possessions at this end that were kept alive. Huge shot here. Got them both. That's a two possession game now. And another timeout called by UNLV. They're left with one. White is still in pain. White was injured on the basket that gave them the lead at 61-59. He is out. Anthony in, shot blocker. It'll be Georgia Tech ball. Georgia Tech in this game's led for only 55 seconds. Led, in fact, trailed by as many as 14 in the first half. White is really hurting, but it doesn't hurt UNLV to have him on the bench now with Anthony in. Anthony being the good shot blocker he has. So he and Asenge uh, really formidable on the boards. As I mentioned, Asenge only played one minute in the first half because of foul trouble, has plenty of energy now. Crittenden's got to get the ball up the court much faster than what he's doing. UNLV met him with pressure in the backcourt. Adams, who had that big first turnover inside Peacock. Crittenden found him quickly. 24 seconds, two-point game. Ume is going to be heading to the line. Reach in, call against Young. Well, he's an 83% free throw shooter. And you've seen uh, throughout this press, UNLV had gotten the ball to Anthony. You would have thought that Georgia Tech would stay away from the good free throw shooters because there's plenty of time to clock. Let Anthony touch it and then follow him. They've got a seven point advantage at the free throw line in this game. And now Ume to shoot two. Makes two, and it's again back to a two point. I mean, a two-possession ball game. And remember, Georgia Tech, no timeouts. Should they score quickly at the other end? They don't have time to stop it and huddle. This is the big one. And Jim, they ought to try to get the ball up to half court instead of Critton and dribbling the ball up the floor. He's taking much too much time. Lead is four. Again, taking too much time. Inside a 20. Crittenton driving in with ease. Blocked. That's blocked. Crittenton trying to save it and unable to. It's Going back to, George, to UNLV. That's Anthony with another block in there. And as I said, with White out, it really helped UNLV because you got the two shot blockers in there. That was a single. I thought it was Anthony that came over. Great shot block. 
Terry comes in to the lineup. He'll inbound with just 13 seconds. So all good free throwers, shooters to be able to get this inbounds pass. Kruger the best. Smith fouls him. And although Kruger that has struggled from the field in this game, missing all eight attempts from the field, all of them threes, he's four or five from the line. That was a uh, good bit of substituting by Lon Kruger, who has had an outstanding ball game here today as a coach. Game plan was good. Execution was good. Georgia Tech never got it going as their freshman stars never played as stars. Young right at the start of the ball game had easy looks, couldn't make them. And Crittenden never did really get into his flow. Makes it a five-point game. Substitute the shot blocker back in there. Anthony for Terry. That's, that is what you don't want to have happen. Have a technical foul call. Guys Ooh. running in off the <laughs> That's six men on the floor for a second there. Singay had not checked out. Pass to midcourt. Why? It's stolen away by Ume and UNLV with six seconds heading to the line. Mountain West Conference comes up with a big win here. And Georgia Tech about to be the second ACC team eliminated in the opening round, the first round. So two shots for Ume. Jim, a team that lost a double overtime in the opening round of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. So not the way they wanted to end the season. A Georgia Tech team that beat North Carolina this year once. Duke, Boston College, Memphis, and Purdue. Six-point margin. Let's wait and see if they make a quick three. Well, they've got a, there's a lot of time here to do it. Crittenton puts up the shot. Nope. Underneath, put back, yes. But UNLV's moving on to round two. The Run Rebels, their first tournament win since the 1991 NCAA tournament when they won a regional final that year to make it to the final four in Indianapolis. This is their first tournament win since that team of 91. Advancing now in the Midwest bracket to take on the winner of either Wisconsin or Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Chevrolet players of the game, Aminu for Georgia Tech off the bench with 11 points. Wendell White, 19 points, eight rebounds for the running Rebels. Well, they gave up the big lead, talking about UNLV. But then they fought back, answered the challenge, and win it. Greg Gumbel coming up next.